This podcast deals with disturbing subject matter. Listener discretion and headphones are advised. It's time to open the door to your mind. Sit back and listen to true horror. But be careful of what you allow in. Because it's time to go through the fog. I'm Dark Hero, and this story's called Clubhouse of Horror. The only thing a child should be concerned about is going to school, having fun with friends, and making good memories. A child should not have to worry about how they'll survive in a living nightmare. Decades ago in a small town in the middle of nowhere, there was a group of kids named Amber, Lewis, Daniel, and Tyler, a ragtag bunch that were known as the weird kids. But they had each other, so nothing else mattered. Amber was tough. Her family had a farm a few miles away from town, and every day after doing her daily chores, she'd bike all the way to school. She was always down for adventure, and her dad taught her all sorts of things. Lewis was quiet. He lived with his grandparents, and even though he didn't talk much, he was extremely good with drawing. He really lit up when something caught his eye for him to draw. Daniel was a punk. Yet despite his tough guy exterior, he was a big softy inside. His dad wasn't the greatest, but he was a kind kid who'd do anything for his friends, even picking a fight or two. And then there was Tyler, who came from a good family and was the smartest kid in the group. He loved to learn something new and you'd always find him with a book in his hand. These four were always together. And when they weren't together in school, you'd find them at their clubhouse. Amber's dad had an old barn on their property that was left unused, so... One summer, she offered it up to the group of friends, and they transformed it into their secret spot to hang out. Together, they spent all summer cleaning it up and decorating it with their favorite things. Amber patched up the holes in the wall. Tyler brought books and comics for everyone. Lewis decorated the place with colorful pictures, while Daniel brought snacks he'd stolen from the market. One day, after school, Daniel suggested that they meet up at the clubhouse. Daniel's dad was going through a tough breakup after being laid off work, and being at home was hard on him. The other three had things to do, but suggested he lay low there for a while and see him tomorrow. The next day came, and the three had noticed that Daniel had not shown up for class. They rushed towards Daniel's home, and his dad answered the door, then proceeded to tell the kids that he never came home that night. The three friends were concerned, and headed towards the barn. When they arrived at the clubhouse, they opened the doors to find the drawings ripped from the walls. Books were flung everywhere, and food wrappers strewn across the floor. Amber screamed and pointed to a splatter of blood in the corner. The kids assumed the worst, that Daniel had been hurt or that his father had found him, but where had he gone? Amber rushed towards her home, thinking that maybe Daniel had fled there. Tyler and Lewis decided to stay at the clubhouse just in case he returned. The boys felt afraid and then a wave of guilt hit them. Daniel was in trouble, yet they had abandoned him. Lewis started to pick up scraps of paper that were once his drawings walk, while Tyler cleaned up the trash and books. Tyler? Lewis said in a shaky voice. Tyler turned to see Lewis holding up a drawing, but it wasn't one of his. On a crinkled sheet of paper was what looked like a drawing of a stick figure, laying down in a pool of blood with red smears across it. The sun was setting and it was getting dark. The boys wanted to stay longer, but they were too afraid to sit there alone. Lewis went to open the door and Tyler heard a muffled scream. Lewis was being suspended in the air. His mouth clenched in the hands of a man wearing a white jumpsuit covered in blood. Get out of my home! The man snarled under his breath as he stepped towards Tyler. Lewis's muffled screams filled the clubhouse, and the man let out a frustrated groan. 
The man threw Lewis into the ground, and Tyler's ears were filled with a sickening snap. Tyler took careful steps backwards, asking what happened to Daniel. The man lunged at him, and soon his hands were wrapped around Tyler's throat. The pressure on Tyler's neck was intense. He felt as though it would snap at any moment. This is my fucking home! The man shouted, his saliva dripping onto Tyler's face. The young boy looked into the eyes of the killer and his vision began to blur, tears welling up in his eyes as he saw the pure hatred on this man's face. Tyler's consciousness was fading. The man's words, my home, my home, Tyler's consciousness was rang in his ears. The man's words, the man let go of Tyler as an agonizing scream filled the air. Ah! The boy watched as the man flailed in the darkness, a crazed Lewis on his back, broken wooden shard of the barn gripped tightly in his little hand. Lewis was clinging to the man with almost every ounce of strength he could muster. His teeth were sunk into the man's jumpsuit. Lewis stabbed the man over and over with a shard of wood. Tyler felt a warm mist of blood hit his face and his friend defended them. Stop! Stop! A familiar gruff voice caught through the chaos and a beam of light hit the three of us. It was Amber's dad with a flashlight and a gun in his hand. Lewis dropped onto the floor and the man raced towards Amber's dad. Then, a gunshot. After a while, the authorities arrived and the boys told them everything that had happened. The man had escaped from a nearby hospital and the sound of the gunshot was enough to stop him. Lewis and Tyler had a few bruises and broken bones but were otherwise unharmed. Amber clutched her friend's hands tightly that night. A few days later, Amber's dad gave the children an earful and told them to never go play there again. The man was incoherent and wasn't able to tell the police anything. Daniel remained missing. But a week later, Daniel's dad moved away. They all thought that he couldn't bear the loss of his son, but Amber's dad assured the children that the night before the incident, Daniel's dad came to pick him up. Through the Fog is recorded and edited by Hop. Intro and outro by Katie Kemp. For more stories, go to www.throughthefog.org. We'll be back in two weeks, so keep your eyes on the fog.